BMI checks or ASCAP checks start slowing down, right? As opposed to some cats, they were like, man, just, you know, I take 25, let's just figure something out, man, and you can keep sampling my stuff. Or, like um, Lamont Dozier told me, come by the house, man, I got a bunch of stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole bunch of stuff you can dig up. And so that's, you know, these people want to stay alive, man. You know what I mean? So they really, it all depends on who you're dealing with. That's what it is. And the producer, uh, who's your favorite lyricist, and what do you look for in a lyricist when you're choosing to work with people or looking for someone to work with? Um, over the years, I've learned how to be especially in trying to be a scholar in this, I learned how to look at things favorite and best as a difference. Some people get that confused. Mm -hmm. Your favorite and the best, something else. Because okay? mm -hmm. we're looking at it from an objective standpoint. And when you make a, a best list, you look at body of work, you look at, you know, it's like a pie graph. How much of, you know, you have this much, but you know what I mean? It's like you have, so my favorite is most. It's my favorite. Like, most is my favorite. Who I feel the best is, pound for pound, has done it all. This is Jay, man. I don't give a damn what nobody says. <laughs> <laughs> because if you sit down, and you have to say that from a biased, an unbiased standpoint, right? He's still here. Right? Since 96, he owns a basketball team. <laughs> right? But at the same time, can drop verses, still respected by everyone. You know what I mean? He's one of, still one of the few producers, um, one of the few rappers, if not the only rapper that they can make the producer somebody. You know what I mean? If Rick Ross or somebody like that, or whoever's you know, Drake has wrapped up a lot of cast beats or whatever. You know what I mean? But when Jay Z says your name, it's time to go house shopping. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I think, from, you know, just from that standpoint, and like you said, most consistent, really, stories, like all of that, he can do everything. A lot of cats are like one dimensional. He can do it. It's nothing he can't do. Right? He can give you an album talking about his mama for 12 songs, <laughs> and it's like, man. Or he can talk about the street or whatever, He's, you know. But my favorite, my personal favorite is most. And I'm talking that, that 98 to 2002 most, that rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Rock. Kill it. Yes. Who were four of your major influences who got you into producing? Pete. Yeah. In the, like mostly in the, like who were like in, on the R&B side? The question. Um, R&B, Jimmy Jam too. Um, is their body of work is incredible. Uh, Teddy Riley is another one. Mm -hmm. Raphael Sadiq is another one. Mm -hmm. I'll be sure I had an incredible producer by the name of Kyle West. Mm -hmm. Chucky Thompson is another one. Chucky Thompson is the one that started Fused the R&B hip hop thing together. Like Chucky Thompson was really one of the people responsible for Mary J. Blige, right? Have us singing over these hip hop beats. Like, what's the full? What's the full one? I still think my life is one of the probably most important R&B albums yeah. today. You know what I mean? Because it just it fused it all at one. You know what I mean? So that's some of my favorite R&B. What was your motivation for the Nas uh, God Step Son? I got to hear Nas over there. Those. Yeah. <laughs> How did he receive it? So, um, this is something I want. I'm so much of a fan. I'm going to do it regardless. I want to hear it. You know what I mean? I just sometimes musicians they just want to do something because they just want to hear it, and I wanted to hear it. You know what I mean? I wanted to hear what it would sound like to take Nas back to like Illmatic or something like that. So I did it. I'm like, well, I do it myself. You know what I mean? But I didn't know how much of a, that's kind of what we talked about earlier, I didn't know the power of the internet at the time, so when it hit the net, it just ran. 
and it's still running. Like people are still discovering that record, and so that's that's why I did uh, that stuff. We're gonna try to go this way. This we're gonna try to do so. Yes. Um, I keep thinking about this thing you said in the documentary about how um, like there's not as much like fan culture anymore that like everyone's a participant, no one's just a fan. Um, how does that switch from like fan culture to participatory participatory culture? Change how you do things as an artist, and like moving forward, how do we keep these like arts and culture self-sustaining when everyone's playing and no one's watching? Um, all this comes to the Um, it's gonna get to a point where the internet has made everybody think they can do. Right? <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, because it made it like super easy super easy for, especially when you have an artist that may have 50,000 followers on Twitter, 2 million hits on YouTube, and then go to Sacramento, California, and there's 50 people at his show, and he's like, damn, I'm hot, what the hell? <laughs> it gives you kind of a false sense of reality, and I think some people are kind of figuring it out and then turning it back, because like we talked about. Video killed the radio star. Mm. Internet killed the video star. So now what's going to kill the internet star? Like that's mm. where we're going now. So I think once we get there, it'll, it'll start to change. How I balance it is it's always be a fan. I'm always, I'm always a fan. You know, we're always, lovers of music are always on the net. You know, we're known as the taste makers. Like we're always on the net looking for new stuff. Like there was a group. Um, and I worked with princess, three young ladies by the name of King. And they got on the net with, they had three songs, just three. Man, it's like a, it's like a network. It hits every artist. And when you meet somebody you've seen a long time, you heard it, yeah, I heard it. And it's like, it just runs. Well, let me let you hear this new artist. This is always stay a fan. I'm always a fan, because that's how I started. Um, I didn't expect. I was a raucous kid, man. I love raucous records, right? I'm sound bombing one and two, black star, man, I don't wanna hear nothing on the radio. <laughs> but me working with Jay-Z was kinda like so left field for me that I never left. I didn't expect that world coming, so I never really joined that world. You know what I mean? Like, you know, people do Grammys and all of that, and I don't, don't do. If they see me somewhere out, they're like, what you doing? I've gotten that before. What you doing here, man? What you doing at this BET after park? Why are you here? It's just, I never put myself in that world. I just stayed a fan. Right? I just stayed feeling. It's probably a big reason why I live in North Carolina because the entertainment world does not live in North Carolina. So I want to stay as far away from it as possible. I just wonder if you have any other influences, any other genre of music that uses sampling. House music came from the very similar backgrounds to hip hop. Um, yeah. They use similar techniques and started at the same sort of time. Just wondering if there's any sort of particular arts and just house as an example. Um, and I just learned this, learned this recently from um, the documentary director, Kenneth Price. We were talking about when I, I was about to do my Harvard uh, presentation, we were talking about sampling. And an album that I grew up on, and I skipped a part of it in my. Um, in, in my presentation, because I kind of skipped how big of an impact MTV, not your MTV rap, but MTV had on me, like Duran Duran and all the British pop rock groups from the time, from Pet Shop Boys, and all. like I'm probably a bigger fan of that, like that 80 to 85, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, that was the album that came out, Paul Simon Graceland, and yeah. that album, they used sampling for that album. He went to Africa and he got with different tribal, tribal music and he came back and recreated a Graceland. You know what I mean? It's Paul Simon we're talking about. So, you know, I'm, I'm really, I really love the, the sound and the feeling, that kind of euphoric feeling that, that the British movement came with from like 1980. Huh? You don't just say like the language. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so I, that's, I just, you know, I just love that, you know what I mean? Like, 
I'll be I'll DJ and I'll just do that for like 30 minutes. I, was, I love it so much. Man. It's just, the music is there. West End Girls, man, it's, you just can't beat that shit. Right. But that's that's a big influence of mine. Really big influence. This will be the last question. Oh, really? <laughs> Does it have to be really? They pray song. You can't go all night. You really can't. So let, let me just pick. Uh, I'm from the Bronx. Yeah. Oh, uh, thank you. You are. Her mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. right here in the hat. And I'll be back here. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Really? Well, you can't. Oh, no, no, no. Let me just give you my question. I'm going to give my question to my Go ahead. <laughs> Something real. I feel like that's what us as human beings are searching for. Us as artists, we search within ourselves to produce something real. Right. I am a singer, songwriter, producer, rapper. I like to consider what I do as art. And I feel like everything you just presented, everything you just imparted on all of us is just it's magical and it's eloquent. I appreciate it. When, when you said, when the public enemy, you said, um, I want to create leaders. Right. Mm -hmm. All I want to do in life is to inspire, help people, and for those dark moments at night when you're all alone, I want people to play my song and feel solid. I feel it. My question is would you allow me to stand in front of the entire room and spit one of my tracks off the cover. Okay. If you want to be a single songwriter producer, one thing you have to understand is to know this presentation. Because what you can do as an artist, a cappella, there are 50 million kids on the net that can do it. The difference is, is create a medium. We listen, as artists, we listen to mediums. We listen to finished products. That's what we do. That's what separates you from another kid that can spit, right? What you're doing and what you're doing as far as freestyling and spitting 16, kids have been doing that, man, since 73. <laughs> so, if you have a finished product, if you're a singer, songwriter, producer, the one thing I would say to you is this. Don't put twelve. Don't put money on twelve different horses in one race. Put your money on one. Okay. Don't be a jack of all trades, master of none. Start off with one. Master one art first. Right. I think sometimes we have that as an artist. Now I'm saying so I'm writing producer because now it's becoming a thing to say. Learn one craft first. Before I wanted to teach, I had to learn to make beats. I had to make sure I was good at it before I can start it. Well, I can start to spread it. So what I say to you is, if you have a medium, if you have a song that I can listen to, because I want to hear finished product, I'll listen to that. But to be fair, I can't. Okay, cool. Um, what when I started producing years ago, there was like this kind of debate between producers that compose their own beats and producers that sample. I can see that there's potential in both, and they both take an art form, but have you ever came across that argument, and how do you defend your stance? I don't, I don't, and some, some people see me say this on Twitter, I don't call, ting, 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 composing a damn beat. <laughs> <laughs> some people think, well, I don't sound like, I, I use keyboards, but your ass can't play. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you can't play. You don't know what a chord is. You don't know what a chord progression is. You don't know what a chromatic scale is. You don't know what harmony is. You don't know what a three-part harmony is. You don't know what a falsetto is. All those flops, terms I just used, you just don't know. You know what I mean? So that's my debate because, to be honest, it's harder to sample than it is to Tink, 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 and make a hook. <laughs> but when I was coming up, I used to listen to like a, a Rodney Durkin singles, but primarily um, 
He used to do a lot of instrumentation, like playing keys and chords and chord changes, like the Neptunes. Right. They have crazy chord changes. Right. Instrumentation. Right. And I would listen to like Dilla and just be floored by his beats. But he's crazy. Yeah, crazy yeah. chord progression. Right. But see, the thing about it is, from the Pharrells and the and the and the Timberlands and the Ronnie Jerkins and the one who use keys and the one that don't, they don't look at me any differently. You know what I mean? They don't look at me as, oh, that's the kid that sounds it. They look at me as a beat maker. They look at me as a musician. Because the cycle of life is this. I'm taking a sample, and I may flip it, and I may change it around or whatever, but a band has to replay it. How can a band replay something if it's not musically right? <laughs> I had a bass player from Mary J. Blige's band tell me, it's like you took this sample, man, and you made the bass line to where it makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's the difference. Right. I'll shut people up. <laughs> 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 okay, this is a question to you as a historian and a lover of hip hop. So you said that Public Enemy were like your black history teachers in a way. So I want to ask you about a specific bar. Karate Chop, Chop remix with Lil Wayne. Song I never heard. Well, he basically said, "Pop that with the, or he said, beat that with like Emmett Till." Like also, Mims is back and says that Emmett Till, he references Emmett Till too. So I just wanted to ask you, how do you feel about this? Like you learned important, inspiring things about black leaders through music, but now when you have just for sake of a, a punchline. Our leader, our, our important figures being just thrown spotted. I want to know how you feel about this and how you feel that future generations will look at this. Like, um, I mean, like anything else, it'll be studied. But one thing is for certain, I think. I mean, it will be. Like, I mean, no matter what, musicians of the 2000, 2013, they're going to study it 20 years later. Of what? They call hip hop the black CNN. What was going on at this particular time? That's an indi an indication of what was going on at this particular time. And what's going on is this. People think that Emmett Till was 200 years ago. Right? And, you know, people think that when we as black Americans talk about slavery, sometimes. <laughs> Other races say, oh man, let it go. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm saying this is true. This is true. This is true. <laughs> but they do it to everyone. They, they, don't, they don't do it to the black men, they do it to Jewish. They do it to everybody. Anybody that's been oppressed. This is they, you know. And my parents are 70 and 71. They grew up in. That's I have to go home and hear stories, right? You're just dealing with a generation of you're dealing with the generation of YOLO. <laughs> I'm serious, you know, it's about me, it's all about me, it's, it's what it is, it's like we talk about, it's called social, being socially independent, that's what it is. <laughs> so, the things that we hold dear and the things that we talk about that maybe happened 40, 50 years ago, sometimes the kids is not that important, but to be honest, even artists before Lil Wayne, came along, there was a period that we as musicians kind of forgot to sneak these messages into our song. So it's not his fault, he's just a byproduct of what's going on. There was a point, you know, that whole Afrocentric movement in hip hop maybe lasted five, six years. It extended to Wu-Tang Clan, but they did it from a method of scientific mathematics with nobody really got it. <laughs> right? I mean, when I say nobody really got it, some people got it in Wu-Tang, but really didn't, people really didn't understand the brilliance of the rhythm what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So once all of that was over and the shiny suit era came along, <laughs> they say they say from president from a presidential standpoint, if you notice, the best music is made when a Republican is in office. Notice that? Yeah. <laughs> because when a Democrat is in office, when Clinton was in office, we paid, everybody got money, everybody got a job. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about like you know what I mean? but when you know when it's time when it's the, you know we're up here and what we have is ours and y'all get it on your own you know what I mean you earn it like we had to earn it 
you get college dropout. But once we get to an age where everybody got money, the music is going to change. So he's just a byproduct of what? If you probably get Lil Wayne in the room by himself, he'd be like, yeah, man, I, I was <laughs> but I think, you know, some kids, they think, you know, they kind of wrote that on, you know what I mean? Like, it, it is, but I mean, it's just a situation of people think that that particular point in history was 200 years ago. That's how fast the internet speeds things up, you know what I mean? So they think that's a long time ago, man. And they think that it still doesn't exist. As me, as, as a black man, there's still some places I can't go in Mississippi today. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's, it's just a sign of the time. Sign of the time, but I think I think just that I think good kid Mad City just smashed all of that. You know what I mean? It just, it just wiped it out. And I think a lot of those cats from that time are getting nervous. They have to do exactly what they need to do to get your attention. Because right now, can't you can't do what are you going to do when the number one billboard, the number two person on billboard has a message? We haven't seen that in a long time. Have we? <laughs>